here we have the keyboards from the Skinner organ. Um, uh, we sent these keyboards out to one of our big suppliers, Organ Supply Industry in Erie, Pennsylvania. They're a real good company. And they're one of the largest supplier of organ pipes and parts in the world. And they rebuilt and recovered these keyboards. These keyboards did have ivory and the ivories were broken and some of them had been lost and they were yellowed and worn and really the keyboard was quite beat up. So we had the keyboard all rebushed and you can see instead of putting ivory back on, they put a material that looks very similar to ivory and wears pretty much as well as ivory. It's actually cow bone and it's polished up and really at this point is almost indistinguishable from ivory. Uh, but ivory is no longer used. Uh, there's a ban on importing and selling any kind of ivory because of the danger to uh, elephants in collecting the ivory. So the keyboards are all nice and tight. They were rebushed on the bottom and the ivories were all replaced with cow bone. Uh, in the back is the gang switches for the console. Uh, the console has all been refinished. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but it's all been refinished, sent out to a refinisher. These are pneumatic uh, stop actions, primary actions, that send air to all the couplers and all the gang switches. And speaking of gang switches, Holly is rewiring all the contact blocks. The old contact blocks were all worn out and torn up. So we took off the old contact blocks and we put in new ones and Holly is wiring those on there. It's a painstaking job. I'm glad he's doing it and not me. Uh, you can see that he's got some of the gang switches rewired um, and they're wired out to what are called spreader boards. You can see at the bottom of the switching unit um, are spreader boards. And so we'll wire from the wind chest with all new wiring into these spreader boards. And then we wire from the console into the underneath the floor into the organ chamber uh, and hook onto these spreader boards. So this is a 61 note spreader board. Uh, it has, it's set up an octave, so that'll be wired on site. And that way we can take the wire into the console with one end of the harness, wire into the chamber with the other end of the harness, and then we actually have uh, plugs that we uh, plug together and we can transport the console separately. Now you can see these gang switches, they're set up so that when they get leather, they inflate and they have all electrical contacts which swing into place. There's a bunch over here. And these are currently being re-leathered, I think. All right, some of the thumb piston boards which we'll be re-leathering, I'm sorry, uh, recontacting, uh, and we'll clean these up and make, make sure they're all rebushed and have a nice feel and are responsive. Here's one of the combination system actions. This has all been rebuilt. You can see all the new leather that's been put on. And this is all set up to hook to the draw knobs. So it's designed up here. This is how it sets. This, it has little cams and the cams are set one way or the other, depending on whether the stops in the on or off position. And then there's a swinger unit underneath that's fired by these pneumatics that picks up that particular stop if it's been set on and turns the stop on. All right, here Evan is working on the one of the expression motors. Skinner uses what's called a whiffle tree motor. It has collapsing pneumatics, almost like big sandwich pneumatics. And uh, there are 16 per motor, and they're all hooked up in what's called a whiffle tree. So 
so they have to be cut apart, sanded down. You can see Evan's got a lot of these sanded down already. And then the rubber cloth material has to be replaced. Thanks, Evan. <laughs> Here's Stefan, and he's working on re-leathering pouch boards. This is a Skinner Pitman chest. Uh, Skinner uh, developed the Pitman chest, and it's pretty much the this chest was built in 1920, and the Pittman chest today are pretty much the same design. Skinner was very innovative in coming up with quick, responsive, reliable uh, wind chest actions. So Stefan has taken this pouch board and sanded all the old pouches off, and he has new pouches that are being glued onto the pouch board. Uh, there is one pouch per pipe. So in a Skinner organ that has, you know, 2,000 pipes, the pouches, re-leathering the pouches on all the wind chests is a big job. Uh, Stefan's a little more than halfway through the main wind chest. There are four in the organ and we've got two done. This is the third one he's working on. And each chest has about eight or 10 of these pouch boards. Uh, uh, depending, like a five-stop chest would have 10 of these pouch boards, and uh, a six, seven-stop chest would have 12 or 14. Uh, the pouches come, uh, we order them in uh, already punched out with the pads glued on, and underneath each pouch goes a spring, so Stefan keeps the springs all sorted and that way he can put the springs back on and put them right where they came out. They go in behind the pouch, underneath the pouch. And then there's also paper gasketing that seals the channel boards, and Stefan has punched out new gasketing for the channel boards. Stefan, Stefan continues to re-leather pouch boards for the Pittman chest. The organ had four Pittman chests for the manuals, uh, or was it five? One for the choir, one for the great, two for the swell, so four. And uh, the pouches have to be taken off, the leather has to be removed. Stefan uses an iron and a wet rag to, to uh, loosen up the old pipe glue. And we'll scrape that off and then puts new leather on and new pouches on. And he's got uh, two out of three Pittman chests re-leathered. The fourth one, which was a duplexing chest, we actually sent out. Uh, it's a complicated chest, and we figured we would let someone else uh, deal with it. We sent it out to Oregon Supply Industries. So once the glue is loosened up, Stefan will scrape off the old pouches clean up the boards, put on new gasketing, and then glue on the new pouches. Uh, there are literally thousands of pouches in this organ, so <laughs> it's been slow going. This is the combination action setter system. This is a part, we just saw one. So this is the other side. There's one on the left and one on the right. And this leather has all been redone and these units set the cams on and off for the different stops and here you can see this is a part uh, and you can see the pneumatics that have all been re-leathered so This, uh, this unit is in the process of being rebuilt and should be done in the next week or so and go back into the console. Chris is rebuilding the pedal board. We salvaged the old frame and had it all carefully cleaned and stripped and refinished. So it's in nice shape. And then we're putting on new uh, naturals on the keyboard, these are all maple and new sharps. These are, I believe, yes, they're, they're wooden sharps. I think that they're maple 
with an ebony cap on the top and uh, they're all stained and finished so it all looks black. <coughs> uh, Skinner used a special bumper gasket and so we've had to duplicate that. It's actually glued up. Uh, Chris still has to regasket the keys themselves. They're a little bit, a little bit loose, so he'll put new leather gasketing on the end of each pedal, and then they have to be sprung. And the contact rails are ready to go underneath. Holly has those all rewired. All right, uh, I'm down on the main floor. Uh, we can see the Tiffany window. Uh, I'm going to walk along. We actually had to take, we had the parishioners take out a number of the pews right here because this is where we set up our lifts when we brought stuff up and down from the balcony. So uh, I'll just walk out and uh, we can see the window and then I'll turn around and you can see the, the organ itself. All right, so there's the case and the console down in the front with the blanket over it. And uh, all the pipes are, of course, out except for the some of the pedal pipes on the far left there. All right. We're lucky because we had two big rooms just right to either side of the organ and behind the organ case for us to use to store pipes and parts. That was very handy and saved us a lot of time. Uh, a lot of the pipes did come out of the church and go back to the shop for cleaning and re-leathering and re uh, The reed pipes we had actually had out not too long ago and had them all cleaned and they're in good shape. So we kept those at the church. All right, Stefan is climbing up from the outside into the upper swell. And uh, he'll be putting in tow boards in a minute. Oh, he'll be handing them up, I think. So the guys are real careful. They vacuum as they go, and then they vacuum again, and then they vacuum again. It's easy to track dust in, and dust is the enemy of any pipe organ. So we do a lot of vacuuming uh, multiple times to keep uh, any dust from working down into the mechanisms and causing ciphers or problems once we get the organ playing. Right now we have all the wind chests in and most of the winding is in. There still are a few wind lines that have to go in. These are the tremolo lines. <coughs> tremolo lines are often quite long. Um, uh, the tremolo is usually located at least eight, 10 feet. And in this case, you can see it's almost 20 feet. Uh, the tremolo is located about 20 feet from the wind chest. <coughs> Excuse me, the, the uh, length of the wind line helps the tremolo to oscillate more. It gives it almost like a piston effect. 
And you can see these two last tremolo lines still have to go in. <coughs> the guys have uh, the frameworks, the framework in for the swell shades, uh, the swell and the choir shades. And you can see here are some of the shades. Uh, there's crates of pipes. Um, here is the um, braces for the facade pipes. <coughs> They're located about eight, 10 feet up on the facade pipe. And there's a clip on the back of the pipe that hooks into these pins that stick up behind each pipe. Uh, here we can see some of the wooden pipes. They've all, all been cleaned and the stoppers have been replaced. I don't know whether you can see the new stopper leather that's in there. Uh, here's some more of the expression shades. Uh, here's all our wiring cables. Um, with this organ, uh, because we're restoring it, um, we're duplicating all the old wire runs. The only difference is, you can see at the end of each cable, is a connector. So that we can wire in from the various wind chests into the uh, cable and then uh, just plug into the connector uh, rather than pulling the wire through from the floor uh, underneath the floor <coughs> excuse me between the uh, uh, chamber and the console Over here we have more of the swell shades. Uh, along the wall here you can see this is framework that stands on the wind chest and supports the pipes. In this case it supports the reed pipes. <coughs> I don't know whether you can see that or not. Let's see what it says. That's the cornopian, supports the cornopian in the swell. And this is the corno d'amour, which is an oboe sound. And then the 16-foot fagato. Uh, and over here, I think we have the choir. Uh, what's this? I think this is the clarinet. And then this slightly bigger one is the French horn. Here we have crates of pipes. Uh, you can see uh, we have some tubes that will go in. These are the new tubes, and they replace these old tubes. Uh, they, uh, the tubes uh, operate the wind shafts. I'm gonna go out here, it's kind of dark, but uh, we can see some of the Borden pipes, uh, some of the Longer pipes are mitered over so that they will fit, actually fit into the swell box. And then I'm going to walk into the choir room and that has some of the pipe work, uh, some of the rack boards. Um, you can see uh, these boards fit over the wind chests and support the pipes as they stand straight up. Uh, we can see right here on the floor uh, this is the resonators for the 16-foot octave, 1 through 12, of the 16-foot trombone. Um, uh, the bottom octave of the trombone is wood. And then uh, at 8 foot C, it goes into a zinc resonator. And then these are all pipes, in some cases facade pipes. And then there still are some parts that have to go into the organ. Uh, we won't actually put in the <clears throat> pipework until everything's back together and we've got all the bugs worked out and got all the uh, uh, everything uh, winded and working right. Um, so we're still at least a couple of weeks off from that. But you can see the uh, wooden, I'm sorry, the metal boots for the 16-foot trombone. There's a couple of them. Uh, they sock it into a chest 
and then those wooden resonators uh, socket down over the top, over that little um, nipple that sticks out of the top there. It has a felt gasket and the wooden resonator rests right on top of that and the felt gasket seals it. Um, these are tubes for the offsets. Now these are all lead tubes and they have boards at the end so you, you can uh, get the tubes into place and then screw the boards tight against the wind chest. So for instance, uh, in the choir, there's a 16 foot uh, open flute. I forget if it's called a concert flute. I think it's a concert flute. And one through 12 of that is offset. So there are 12 of these lines that go out to a wind chest off to the side of the main chest. And uh, the air is transferred from the main chest to fire a primary action on the offset chest. And that makes the pipe play. Uh, a lot of the parts are out here. This is just some walk boards and a winding tube for one offset note. Um, uh, some framework. This is framework for the uh, walk boards. So that won't go in for a little while until we get all the chests in good working order. All right, I'm gonna walk out of the choir room. Uh, we can see some of the pedal board and pipes. These are the 16 foot board in the pedal. It's a fairly big scale. You can see all the new leather uh, on the stoppers. And uh, these pipes are painted black. They're behind the facade and rather than uh, uh, have people see them through the facade. Uh, they're painted black, flat black. Uh, we can see some of the traces for the swell shades. That's this mechanism with all the pins. And the uh, uh, these connect all the shades uh, in one bank so that the motor can open and close all the shades for one division. Uh, a fairly complicated mechanism. And these are some muffler boards and doors and things like that for the uh, box. Uh, a walk board. Um, let's see which one that is. Okay, that's the upper swell walk board. All right, I'm going to walk out into the balcony where the guys are working. Um, looks like some conduit runs for wiring. Uh, we've got the console here. Um, we can see into the chamber. The uh, A lot of the, uh, I think all the chests are back into place. So we can see here's the uh, pedal trombone. This is for the eight foot part of it. Uh, the eight foot pipes, 32 pipes set on this. And then the trombone is extended down uh, to play at 16. Um, here we've got the pedal open wind chests all restored and the pedal open pipes, the 16 foot pipes, the biggest pipes in the organ are now in place. Uh, here's the winding for this pedal open chest and then this reservoir which is all this you can see it has nice new leather corner le leather gussets and new uh, hinge material um, very nicely restored nice work by the guys to uh, uh, get this reservoir back into place and get it all restored uh, the guys uh, shellac everything before it goes out so you can see that the uh, wind chests are all nice and shiny All right, let me duck underneath here. You can see some of the wiring that runs out of the chest and has to run to the various junction boards. Okay, I'm crawling through.
And here's some of the rebuilt gang switches and wiring boards, uh, junction boards right here. Uh, and we'll wire in from the Winchester into these boards and wire from the console into these boards. Uh, this is the great wind chest. So you can see some of the tubes that are already in place. Um, uh, these are the manifold boards and they screw down right on top of the chest. So that for the base notes, this is for, for instance, for the uh, eight foot open diapason right here. And uh, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. And then on the other side, it has six uh, tubes. And they go back, uh, you can see right along here, they sneak right along back behind the chest. And there's a junction right here uh, where these two blocks screw together. And the tubes go down to this chest right here which is the uh, offset chest for the eight foot open diapason. And you can see that half of the pipes that sit on there, it's actually a 24 note chest and half the pipes are the diapason. So you can count, should be able to count 12 different uh, scallops. They're tied in place with the twill tape that's all been refelted and new twill tape. Um, and then also uh, looks like 12 notes over here for the uh, eight foot concert flute. And then some of that is actually uh, tubed up to uh, an offset chest. I think this is, there are two eight foot flutes on the grate. Um, a, Melodia and some kind of Clarabella, I think. And you can see the offset chest. So there's 12 notes that sit on that and uh, 24 notes that sit on this chest uh, down behind the walkboard. You can see that a lot of the 16 foot um, trombones are back in place. And those are, in some cases, mitered quite a quite a fancy miter with, uh, made out of wood. Um, and then there were three pipes that were still out in the uh, choir room that uh, will eventually fit down in. We saw the boots and the resonators for that that will eventually fit down in behind this. You can see all the winding is back in place. Um, it's a big job getting these lines in and out. They've all been repainted and regasketed the the uh, flanges have all been regasketed and those are back in place so uh, the guys are dealing with some of that now the uh, choir expression motor is back in place you can see that right here and that's all been leathered. Uh, actually, underneath, you can see where the uh, there's a connecting link that comes out of the bottom. Uh, we saw that motor being re-leathered in the shop. And the connecting link pulls on this roller bar right here. So the roller bar will rock back and forth and will open and close the expression shades for the choir division, which is directly above my head. Uh, you can see that the, this is the great Winchester. It has one, two, three, four, five different stops. And uh, the rack boards are not in place. And what the guys have done is they've taped up the top of the chest. Here, I'll just pull a little bit of this tape away for a minute. And there are the tolls underneath. So this keeps any debris from falling down into the wind chest while we're working on it. And then once we go to put the pipes back in, we'll put the screw the rack boards on top of the rack supports right here. 
and then uh, pull the tape up and we can start putting pipes into place. So this is the choir reservoir and the choir chest is right above my head that has one, two, three, four, five, six stops. You can see the exhaust magnets that turn each stop on and off and the primaries are up here. <coughs> uh, you can see the choir reservoir with the springs on it and that's all been re-leathered and shellacked and looks really nice. Okay, and over off to the side is the pedal open. We saw the biggest pipes down on the floor, and then there are two different chests in front of them that have some of the smaller pipes for that rank. Okay, I'm gonna walk through the grape division and just take a, we'll take a peek at the lower swell division where the guys are working on the wind chest. Smile, everybody. So they're uh, putting the tow boards down <coughs> and then once they get the tow boards mounted in, they'll uh, finish taping that up. They have one left to do. Um, you can see here's the reservoir for the swell. It's the largest reservoir up in the chamber here. And that has winding lines that go up and down. Uh, some of the winding lines, but not all the winding lines are in place. So the swell is the largest division on the organ, and it actually has two different wind chests. Uh, one below, uh, Stefan's taping up the tow holes now to protect them. So the, uh, all the framework for the uh, uh, swell shades are back in place, um, but we won't put in the swell shades until near the end. It makes it a lot easier to work on the organ and get in and out <coughs> uh, with the swell shades out. Now the upper swell chest, which we can see here, has all these duplexing actions that hang down from the chest. And uh, this is quite a complicated chest. It uh, has several stops that play uh, on the grate. It has a uh, Clautol Dolce and Clautol Celeste that plays on the grate. And then it has several pipes in the division that play on the swell, but also play in the pedal. So you can see across the front, there's this long duplexing action. That's the one for the grate. And then it has two different banks of uh, 32, or actually four different banks of 16 that duplex the notes for the pedal. So the 16th fagato in this well appears in the pedal. And then there's a, uh, a lighter scale 16 foot borden that appears in the pedal also. <coughs> So that's what these funny looking units are with the tubes. All right, I'm going to uh, climb out of the grate and up a ladder and go into the choir division. All right, I climbed up a ladder uh, into the choir box. Unfortunately, the lighting is not real great in here. Um, we're waiting for them to hook up some overhead lights, but they aren't turned on right now. Uh, what we're looking at is the restored harp action. And uh, uh, I'm going to duck through here. You can see... And some of the biggest notes are down. The deepest notes are down here. So 
so that unit is all restored. And it's quite an operation to restore one of these. And it's winded. You can see the winding line come up through. And then it has its own little reservoir that is located underneath that helps regulate the pressure. And it has the primary actions and they tell the bigger wedge pneumatics back here to play the striker. Um, uh, it was quite an operation getting, these are heavy units, a lot of metal and mechanism. And uh, after they were restored, uh, they come apart in two pieces. One sits on top of the other. You can see the scab board that holds the uh, bottoms, the top section, uh, attaches it to the bottom section. Uh, so getting these up was fun. Okay, and then you can see that there are, I'm going to grab the light. Uh, some of the swell shades are in place. We left the main ones out of the middle. Uh, here you can see one of the offset chests. Uh, this is the uh, choir chest, and this is before the tow boards go on and the tubes, uh, tube offs go on. So you can see here's 12 notes, a 12 note, or I'm sorry, a 10 note, uh, no, a nine note offset, and then the bottom three notes are on this little uh, offset right here. They kind of ran out of space and tucked tuck that off so that they could have room to get the door in here. <clears throat> uh, so I think probably soon the guys will be mounting those two boards onto the choir chest. All right, and then we're in the upper swell chest. This is the chest that was so complicated. I stepped down. So here you can see an offset for some of the uh, board and pipes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the offset for the 8-foot stop die pacing or the 16-foot board. Uh, we've got one tow board off. Uh, we left that off because we had to reach in. You can see some of the screws down inside that had to be screwed. The winding box uh, had to be screwed to the side of the chest. And as I mentioned before, this is this real complicated chest that has all the duplexing action. And uh, it has tubes that'll go into place. You can see uh, right here, uh, these will be the 12 notes where my foot is offset for that rank. I think that's the 16 foot board. And those biggest pipes uh, will stand on this offset chest in the back. And looks like some of the taller string pipes, uh, the solitional, uh, go on the center part of this offset. And then uh, over here is the uh, sharp side, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, B of the 16 foot board. And we saw those pipes that were mitered. Uh, you can see in the bottom of this chest uh, a tube, and that tube is for activates the stop. Uh, you can see along the side uh, is a stop action that turns all the different uh, stops on and off for this chest. Uh, and that's screwed to the side of the chest. Usually they hang from the bottom, but because of the the way this chest is designed with all the different um, uh, burrows and duplication. Uh, they couldn't put it on the bottom, so they ended up putting the stop action on the side. And the guys have a lot of the swell shades into place, but again, they left a window open in the middle to pass stuff through. And here's the restored chime action. So this is kind of tucked up on the side and the chimes hang. Uh, we'll get those in pretty soon. They hang from these. It's hard for me to, let me set my light down for a minute. There we go. So the chimes hang from these screws. They're kind of in the shadow there, but there's uh, 
a loop on the top of each chime and they go right over these screws and hang down and these hammers strike strike the uh, different chimes. Uh, over in the corner here, we've got the mechanism for the swell engine. So these, uh, the swell engine is down below and this, uh, this mechanism uh, goes up and down and these traces come across and hook to a long trace and these go back and forth, left to right. And you can see the return springs. So the, the way it's set up is that the springs pull the swell shades open and the motor pulls it closed so that when the organ is turned off, the motor no longer pulls and the shades uh, automatically open uh, and stay in the open position while the organ's off. All right, looking down from above, we can see the tubes for the, right along here, we can see the tubes for the primary action for the duplexing. All right, I've made my way back through the swell in the choir, and I'm looking at the left side of the case where all the pedal open pipes and pedal board and pipes are. Uh, so you can see the tops of the pedal open pipes. They have a wooden flap or a board on the top, and you tune it by sliding that board back and forth and then once you get it into tune, I don't know whether you can see, but the flaps have nails in the top. So you just nail it down into place and uh, uh, the tuning is with a 16 foot open pipe. You tune it once and then you don't have to tune it again for another 10 years or something like that. So the nails are set down, but they're not set down all the way. Uh, they go down through the flaps and then they stick up a quarter inch. So if you need to, you can pull up the nail a little bit and move the flap to uh, retune. Um, let me pull the light up here. So this little offset chest is for the treble uh, bordens and treble open pipes. Um, the bigger pipes set down on top of the uh, uh, chest down below. And then because they ran out of space, they just stuck the treble pipes up right at the very top above everything. And uh, so you can see this treble chest that has 25 or 30 pipes that sit on it. And there's an offset chest here. I believe this is for more of the pedal board and pipes that's on the outside of this well wall. All right, I'm back uh, outside the organ chamber, standing on the balcony risers and kind of looking in. Uh, you can see some of the pedal open pipes, uh, the facade, uh, and we've got the facade pipes out so that we can get things in and out easily. Uh, we try to pad everything that we work on so we don't scratch or ding up the case. Uh, this is a tremolo waiting to go in. I believe it's the choir tremolo. It's actually located down underneath the great division, and that real long line goes down to it. Um, the guys, as we looked at before, here's the, uh, bottom of the choir chest and some of the winding. And Holly's handing in parts to Evan and Stefan. Uh, the, uh, uh, the console is set into place. It fits into this little knit and, uh, We've got the sides and the back off and the top off, but uh, you can see the mechanism now. Uh, Holly still has to pull through those cables. Uh, they'll come down underneath the floor. You can see, actually see the winding line down underneath, and the cables will pull in next to that, and uh, they get 
uh, wired into the back of the console. I think Holly has all that wiring done, and uh, so the cables just need to be plugged in. Uh, let's go around and look at the front of the console. Uh, we've seen that before, but you can see all the new keys, uh, key coverings, and the console's all refinished. Uh, looks really nice. Uh, the guys, uh, I don't think, no, they haven't wired in the on-off switch yet. They're going to wait and uh, turn on the motor pretty soon. All right, we saw some of these mechanisms being rebuilt. Um, the pedal board is not in place yet. Uh, I think it will be pretty soon. Uh, actually, here on the floor, you can see some of the cables that Holly's wired in already. And they have the um, phone cables with the plug-on connector, which makes it much easier to wire in. But we can do all the wiring in the shop and then just essentially plug that cable in from the cable that comes from the chamber. Much easier to deal with. And that's the pedal key contact action. We've just taped that up in place. And once we get the pedal board in place, then we'll fasten that in underneath the pedal board. And uh, that'll, those contacts will operate various pedal stops. All right, we can see down the church, see their beautiful Tiffany window, which is not lit up at the time. Uh, we've got more tow boards and rack boards that have to go in. These are mostly the choir and upper swell rack boards and tow boards.